All right, y'all. So lately, Bitcoin has been making waves. We saw Trump come out talking about how Bitcoin was going to be the the future currency of of America. Basically, they were going to hold all the Bitcoin that they um, acquired and things like that. So, yeah, Bitcoin has been making waves. Obviously, we know that we're in the middle of a bull run and it's speculation that we're, we could get up to like a hundred thousand hundred and fifty thousand i've heard all types of numbers some people going as high as like three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand like i've been hearing all types of things um no one knows what's going to happen but we have another um person here talking about why 150 thousand bitcoin a hundred fifty thousand dollar bitcoin is going to be coming so i'm interested in hearing you all's opinions on what you think is going to happen i just like to kind of educate see what's out there see different opinions and thoughts and kind of just factor it into what I already believe. I don't really just follow anyone blindly. I like to take in the information, digest it, and figure out what I believe, like more so than, um, yeah, more so than living as if one of these videos or something like that is just what what I'm going to live by. No, it's not, that's not how it works for me. But anyway, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and turn on notifications. And yeah, let's jump into it, y'all. I think what the mistake people think is they have to buy a whole Bitcoin and come up with, you know, $63,000. I mean, they can buy a Satoshi, a, a Satoshi every day um, instead of a latte. And more importantly, you know, if Bitcoin network value plays out in Bitcoin, yeah, let's take Uran's number, but let's say Bitcoin is a million. Okay, so it's a 20 times increase from here. Anyone who's long Bitcoin won't care about inflation, you know, and that's the important thing because it's really just the dollar getting cheaper. It's not I mean, that's really what they're experiencing. Natalie Brunel recently spoke with renowned financial analyst and Wall Street strategist Tom Lee. During the interview, Lee... I've been hearing a lot of great points about Bitcoin, and a lot of stuff has been going around for the longest. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, there's a, a certain amount of Bitcoin that exists. So, literally, at these levels, buying at these levels, no matter how much you're really putting into it, you're, you're getting it for a huge deal, especially if it becomes what we all believe that it could become, which I believe is quite likely. Look at how it's being regulated. Look at how presidents are now talking about it. Look at what's going on, how it's a big deal everywhere on the planet. Imagine them making something this big deal, or maybe, and I don't have a, enough research and insight into everything that's ever existed then disappeared, but them, everyone, every country, every government seems to be making a big deal about cryptocurrency. There's regulation coming down. People are really making it a big thing. There's there's Bitcoin ATMs and stuff like that in stores now. Like there's a lot. So for all of this to happen and then something just disappear and evaporate, uh, like I don't I don't see that happening. And then it's a digital currency. We live in the digital age, so it only makes sense that we're gonna we were always going to move from the currency that we use now over to something digital in the first place. Like I know it's like it's just TV and stuff like that, but when you watch the the time travel and space movies and things like that where you're going between between planets and, and all that, they they usually pay, like they usually pay. And I, I, I've always seen it, it makes sense to me that if we ever get to that point, um, probably not within my lifetime or, or who knows, like it, we, we, don't, we don't really know, I mean. But if we ever get there, crypto will probably be the currency being used for that type of travel. So yeah, anyway, but yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. I think Bitcoin is pretty much as as solid as it could potentially get. But yeah, that's just my thoughts. Lee discussed his optimistic view on Bitcoin, wealth inequality, and how Bitcoin could solve various financial problems. According to Tom Lee, there are several factors other than fundamentals that influence prices in the short run, making it simpler to be confident in a longer term price estimate for Bitcoin than a shorter term one. He stated that using a combination of price to book and stock to flow methods, his company's head of digital strategy, Sean Farrell, has set a price estimate of $150,000 for Bitcoin by the end of the year. Lee explained that, with support from significant organizations like BlackRock, Bitcoin has evolved into a legitimate asset class. And I don't know, like, I mean, that by itself is kind of huge because, I mean, arguably, BlackRock controls the world. Um, now, that that's the name that we've been hearing more in recent times, so... I don't know if there's some structural changes going on or or what what exactly is happening there and it's probably obviously like blackrock is becoming the known the known ghost that, that it was a ghost for a while that secretly controlled everything now it's getting out there becoming more and more public so it, it the rabbit hole probably goes deeper when it comes down to there but the fact that blackrock controls so much and they they believe in crypto um and they're siding with crypto i mean it tells you what you need to know right there 
Rather than going all in, he advised investors to dedicate a tiny percentage of their portfolio, 2% or 5% to Bitcoin. Citing his firm's proposal to commit 1% to 2% to cryptocurrency, which has produced notable benefits for their clients, he pointed out that even a tiny investment can have a big impact. Tom Lee also emphasized how Bitcoin might develop into an affordable banking option, especially for people living outside of the US or in underprivileged areas. Because of its increased resilience and usefulness as a hedge against currencies and disasters, he thinks that Bitcoin's value might surpass that of above ground gold, presently valued at $16 trillion. Watch clips from the interview for further insights into Tom Lee's conversation with Natalie Brunel. $16 trillion. If it actually passes gold, that would be life-changing. Like, I mean, that would be life-changing for a lot of people. I mean, people who've been stacking, holding, and collecting and things like that, that really would. But, I mean, if it was to hit something like that, <laughs> nah, I mean, too many, it's too many people holding this. It could I mean, but that wouldn't be, it's, I don't know, that, that would make a lot of people a lot of money going to those levels. But, Truthfully, before it ever hits that, this is the way markets work. Before it would ever hit those type of heights, people would be selling off and stuff like that way before. Like when they see that number that they're okay with, they're, they're going to sell off. That That's just how, how the game goes. So, I mean, I guess there's no one who's going to be holding from right now until it reaches, until it would reach something like that. So, because that, that, that would be a ridiculous hodl for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications true. for more content. Enjoy the video. You know, one, I would just point out, I think it's easier to have conviction on a longer term price than a shorter term. Um, because in the short term, there's a lot more factors beyond fundamentals that affect, uh, you know, a price of anything that has, that trades on a market. And, and you know, for instance, just recently, everything happening out of Germany and Mt. Gox is, is creating short term headwinds and, you know, potentially even breaking technical patterns, but it doesn't change where Bitcoin should be five years from now. But uh, the price target of 150,000 is actually based on work from our head of digital strategy, Sean Farrell. And he's looking at a combination of uh, his, essentially what looks like a, st a stock to flow model and a essential, like basically a price to book model. You know, what what is Bitcoin cost to produce and what is that break even and what multiple should you assign to that? And he triangulates to 100, 150,000 roughly by the end of the year. And I, I think that's pretty achievable. I mean, it, it really prim principally only happens if the S&P actually can rally into the end of the year. And that's our base case. And, you know, if someone's asking, you know, why should they be interested in Bitcoin? Like, So let's say you have some folks listening to this and, and are maybe curious or, but they're not convinced they should own any. I mean, I think that that question has already long been settled because, you know, Bitcoin is now a, essentially a bona fide asset class. I mean, it has the backing of BlackRock, which is the largest asset manager in the world. Um, Larry Fink even today was speaking post earnings about how important Bitcoin is to the future of BlackRock. And it's something that they're encouraging clients to adopt. I think that people, the mistake someone might make if they're interested in Bitcoin is thinking they have to go 100% of their portfolio into it. They only need to put 2% or 5%. And, you know, if you think about someone sitting on cash, that's like one year's worth of interest on their portfolio. They just have to dedicate to crypto. We made that recommendation when we first wrote about Bitcoin that they should put 1% to 2%. Today, if they didn't rebalance that recommendation, um, it's 80% of their total portfolio. So um, it's been a you know huge winner for our clients. And, and many have told us it's really changed their lives by making a what they saw as a kind of a low risk bet, you know, 2% allocation into crypto. And I think that's how people should look at it today because Bitcoin isn't um, peaking, you know, it's not that widely adopted yet. There's still so many skeptics and, you know, there's many financial firms that are restricting their clients from having access to exchange versions of Bitcoin. So the ETF today is not even approved for many firms. And it tells me that there's still a lot of future holders of crypto. How far can Bitcoin go? Well, I I, I think that maybe a sort of a minimum sort of target for Bitcoin, you know, like, hey, when does Bitcoin have to reevaluate whether it's peaking is when the value of Bitcoin exceeds the value of above ground gold today. And that's 16 trillion. And the reason I think 
uh, that's a, a fair benchmark is that, you know, gold might have some industrial uses and it has jewelry uses, but the principal reason it's got 16 trillion of value is it's viewed as a sing, almost a singular hedge against currencies and against yes. calamity. And to, to me, Bitcoin is far more resilient and useful if we were ever in a circumstance where you actually need to start using gold. I mean, you know, if you try to, you know, carry a million dollars worth of gold, you know, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. you probably need a couple of friends to help carry that. You can carry a million dollars of Bitcoin in a, in a, on a wallet. In discussing Bitcoin. Yeah, it's not, it's not practical to actually use gold as a currency um, to store value potentially, but it, it always has to be something other than gold to, to actually spend. Um, if you want to spend any reasonable amount, because if you have like a, a brick of gold, <laughs> the value is what it is. So you can't buy like a, a basket of fruit with that. I mean, you could, but be completely illogical to do that. But yeah. In long term prospects, Tom Lee mentioned a price target of one hundred fifty thousand dollars by year's end. He highlighted the robustness of Bitcoin and its potential to develop into an affordable banking system to persuade investors to put a tiny amount of their capital into it. According to Tom Lee, Bitcoin erases the distinction between money and social good. He pointed out that whereas Bitcoin pays those who keep and utilize it, traditional finance benefits stockholders from a company's success. Lee claims that this makes it difficult to distinguish between capital, equity, rewards, loyalty, and rent seeking. Lee also said that, in the same way that airline miles are seen as money but not as actual currency, Bitcoin is upending the notion of money. In terms of the economy, Lee stated it is doing well despite the Fed's aggressive rate hikes intended to fight inflation. Recessions rarely happen when market participants anticipate one, he pointed out, and institutional investors generally agree that one is imminent. Lee countered that this would indicate that recessions are less likely due to popular anticipation. Lee agreed that there are indicators of a faltering economy, including dwindling excess reserves, a worsening labor market, and challenges in the housing sector. He did think, though, that since they are rate sensitive, they might go the other way if the Fed starts lowering rates. Lee also made the point that there is no evidence of a recession in the credit or bond markets, and there are no indications of a decline in the stock market. As such, he cautioned against using recession speculation as a strategy for investing. Isn't like, um, Nvidia, last I heard, Nvidia was like the only thing holding up the stock market. I don't really look too much into the stocks anymore. But wasn't the whole market being carried by that one particular asset? Like at, at that point, I feel like it's something, you know, something kind of risky or, or off there. If only one company is literally making up the majority of the, the stock market. Let's go back to the interview and watch more clips to gain insights from Tom Lee. I mean, I think Bitcoin's blurring, but even what the definition of money is, you know, um, I mean, it's already blurred the definition of, of like, of community benefiting from holding something because, you know, uh, in a traditional financial system, you want to know what's crazy. Like if you actually think about it away from just the financial aspect, obviously this is, is, is huge for finance. Um, it, it could be everything for finance, but as far as community goes, crypto has actually saved and, and brought a lot of communities together. Like it's given people a reason to come together towards something positive, to, to try to positively impact um, our lives, our family's lives, the people that we love, care about, all of this. Like that, that's, that, that's what crypto has done to the world. And I believe that it, that's more of a net positive than anything, um, just bringing people together. Because with social media, with... I mean, as much as people can come together, laugh and troll and stuff on the internet, coming together for a positive reason and an actual purpose, it that's rare. And I think that Bitcoin does serve a purpose, especially the holders, people who believe in it um, and, and see the vision for it. Like we believe in something bigger that is that, that really is great for mankind. And when's the last time something has done that for the world where it's brought average regular people all together getting behind one you know one big thing that matters you know like so i feel like what it stands for in and of itself is is an amazing thing let's say you take amazon and you have amazon customers and they contributed to the growth and the fact that amazon is one of the largest companies today you know it's really the customers and the loyalty of the community of buyers and sellers 
but the only people that benefited from that are actually the shareholders, the ones who actually provided the capital to Amazon. So it didn't create value for the community itself. I mean, Bitcoin is so different, right? Because Bitcoin is benefiting those who are actually holding it and using it. And that's why I think it is really blurring what, it, what an asset is, because um, it's blurring loyalty and rewards along with equity and capital um, and rent seeking. I mean, all these concepts together. So yeah, it's giving the power back to the people. It's giving power back to the people more so than industries and vague figures where you can't really understand what's going on or, or know what's happening. It's like the people are starting to benefit. We're starting to see value from things, um, utility, like we're benefiting from utilities as, as opposed to like you had credit card companies who start offering things as an incentive, the more competition started to come out. But it's like when, when it comes down to crypto, there's benefits for every single person who's holding and, and it's not it's, it maybe it's because of competitors as well but at, at, overall i think crypto is just it, it just is more built to for communities and to bring people together and to really have holders who you know ho stay around long term and have true loyalty as opposed to there can always be another credit card to come out and try to offer the like that's just a business business is fighting between each other um, when, when this, when crypto, whether you want to look at it like a business or whatever, when that goes up, everyone wins. When, when MasterCard rent wins, MasterCard wins. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's pretty much it. The idea that it's also blurring the definition of money to me makes sense. I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but you know, airline points are actually money, but they don't, we don't view it as currency, but actually it is money. In fact, there's a bill in Congress that potentially might eliminate interchange fees that credit card issuers can, can charge. And it would literally implode the value of all these, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars worth of airline points, which are essentially money to, in many people's minds. I'd understand why people are bearish because, you know, the Fed essentially was planning to give the economy a heart attack by raising rates at the fastest pace ever uh, to kill inflation. And how the economy fared was a secondary consideration. Um, but here we are more than a year after the last hike and the economy's actually doing pretty well. So you're, you're, you, there's an expiration of the risk of a recession. And I've been following markets for almost, or actually for more than three decades, believe it or not. And um, so I've experienced and covered many recessions. Um, recessions rarely happen whenever, when markets are all saying a recession is imminent. Uh, Markets participants aren't that smart. So the fact that so many people think a recession is imminent and it, and we see it, I mean, we do many meetings with clients, institutional investors that view recession as their base case. I mean, that, that, that would just mean everyone suddenly is a great forecaster of the economy. And as you know, nobody can forecast the economy. We don't try to forecast the economy, but the only reason we think a recession is less likely is because everybody thinks a recession is likely. Um, but logically, there are things weakening. I mean, I, I guess I'm not going to try to ignore it. Um, we know consumers are are running out of excess savings and the job market is getting softer. And we know housing has has become a very difficult market. It's unaffordable. And then there's parts of the country where there's huge rise in inventory. Durable goods spending, like on appliances and cars, I mean, it's absolutely tanking. I mean, used car prices are going to fall a lot. And... There's an inventory correction. I mean, there's been a lot of destocking of excess goods inventory. Those are what's causing the slowdown. But the mistake I think anyone will make is to say, oh, well, that means this is going to lead to a recession. I mean, number one, housing, durable goods, and inventory are all extremely rate sensitive. So the minute the Fed starts cutting, all of those reverse. But second, the bond market, credit markets, corporate bond spreads, quality spreads, Things that you think should be blowing out if there was a recession are absolutely mid-cycle. Um, and look at the stock market. I mean, so I would say if someone is saying that they think a recession's imminent and they're bearish, they're shouting at the market. I mean, I don't know anyone who's made money trying to listen to an economist to, to bet on risk markets. It's really the wrong way to, to invest. Meanwhile, analysts are increasingly optimistic about Bitcoin price potential. 
after a recent rebound toward a critical resistance level that had limited gains earlier this week. Following a test of the 50-day simple moving average support around $63,500, Bitcoin surged past $67,000, according to Coindesk data. It is now approaching a resistance line defined by the trend line connecting highs from March and April. This descending trend line has proven challenging to overcome, as seen on Monday and in May, making it a significant hurdle for bulls. Analysts suggest that this resistance might soon be surpassed. Key catalysts could include the U.S. Core Personal Consumption Expenditures, PCE Price Index, the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation, set to be released at 1230 UTC, 830 ET. The PCE reading is expected to show a 0.1% increase for June, following minimal change in May and 0.3% gains in the previous three months, according to FactSet. The annualized rate is forecasted at 2.4% for June, the smallest increase since 2021. Continued progress toward the Fed's 2% target could bolster the case for interest rate cuts. Combined with resilient economic growth, as indicated by Thursday's US GDP data, this could drive increased interest in risk assets, including cryptocurrencies. As we conclude, do you think Bitcoin will reach Tom Lee's predicted price target of $150,000 by the end of the year? How do you think Bitcoin's growing legitimacy and potential for mass adoption will impact the future of finance and investing? Please drop your thoughts in the comments. Yeah, so there we have it. Um, this was actually a pretty well put together video. Um, let me know what you all think in the um, comment section about crypto, uh, about Bitcoin. Um, I definitely see all positive signs when it comes down to it. And the way that I think, I believe that it's, it's definitely on the track to become probably the biggest thing in the world. Um, I, I don't know how the financial market is going to hold up in the future, but I definitely see a day when Bitcoin really takes over and becomes the currency of the future. So, um, yeah, let me know what you all think. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, fam.